recently I picked up a Trek carbon frame and decided to convert the whole bike over to Campanolo parts. Now one of the more interesting areas was the BB90 bottom bracket, converting it over from the Altegra components to the Campanolo Ultra Torque components. I had to learn a lot of lessons along the way and spent some time doing that and hopefully this video will shorten up the cycle for you if you choose to take on this project. So there's five major lessons here. The first one was in when I disassembled uh, the Altegra parts. The second one was in regards to the service bulletin that you can find online uh, regarding making this conversion. The third area was in inspecting and cleaning uh, what needs to be done there because the Loctite that you're going to be using is going to be somewhat of a permanent process. So you want to make sure you uh, get that thing cleaned up right. Um, the next area uh, has to do with how to actually install the bearings onto the, um, onto the crank arms. And then the last area is in creating yourself a little bit of a jig to, to put all this together um, such that uh, if you had to take it apart, um, you'd actually damage the paint. Uh, it takes about 250 degrees to remove this, so we'll, we'll learn a little bit about that. So let's get into it here. The, uh, the first area is when you go ahead and go to remove the Altegra bearings, what I learned there was I was expecting more of an interference fit, more of a friction fit, and uh, it's really just a slip fit. I did call Trek on this matter, and uh, they believed it was supposed to be a little bit more of an interference fit, but as I did some more research on the internet, uh, came out to find that it truly is just a slip fit, so don't be surprised if these things just fall out into your hands. The second area is in the, um, in the service uh, literature that's put out there. Uh, the drawing is actually missing the seals that go between the crank arm and the bearing itself. It doesn't show where those go. They actually do go behind the bearing, so don't forget to install those. Uh, the other thing is, is it does not show the uh, black pieces here that replace the gray uh, parts that came out uh, when you take apart the Altegra part. So those two are missing on the drawing. The next thing that I found was um, it wasn't really clear as to what you had to buy. Uh, it turns out you really need to buy, besides the crank arms themselves from Campy, you really need to buy three things. The first one is this Trek dealer kit, a part number 407383. Uh, that's going to give you most everything you need, but it does not come with the bearings. Now, believe it or not, I found the bearings on Amazon, part number FC-RE012. The last thing that you need is the two Loctite uh, products. This is the primer that you have to put on, and then this is the actual retaining uh, compound that is, uh, takes up some gaps here in between the, uh, uh, the seal seats. Now, when you go to try to dry fit those seal seats. These are these black uh, metal pieces that fit into the carbon frame that you're going to hold in with the retaining fluid. I had to clean a lot of debris uh, that was made from the still from the manufacturing process. Trek didn't really prepare these surfaces for uh, those seal seats, so you're going to have to do a little bit of prep work there to get those things to truly fit in flush. Now, they don't need to be exactly perfect because they don't actually carry any load. If you go in there, you're going to find that the bearing itself actually only seats onto the carbon. It does, that, that seal seat is truly just the name. It's just for the rubber seal to keep out the dirt and debris. Now when you go to uh, put on that seal, like I said, you slide it on before the bearing. Trek sells a, I mean Trek, uh, Campanello sells a tool to install these bearings but I just used a piece of plastic pipe I had laying around, saved a few bucks to knock that uh, bearing down. Uh, if I was doing it every day, I'd buy the right tool, but you know, to save a little bit of money and get the job done one time, uh, you can just kind of take your time and pound those on around it, and it comes out real nice, uh, it sits down nice and firm. The next area uh, is when you actually go, you've got everything prepared, you've put on your retaining uh, compound, I actually built a little jig here uh, that I used to compress those uh, seal seats into the carbon frame and kind of hold them in place. It takes about 24 hours for this retaining fluid here to uh, 
truly cure and you don't want anything moving in the process. So that was just an extra step I took to ensure that those things uh, uh, get put on properly. Because like I said, it takes about 250 degrees to remove this. So you're going to trash the paint job if you've got to reverse that process. Finally, uh, when you go to tighten up the two crank halves here, there's a nut here that uh, needs to be tightened down. And I was able to find out there, again, just doing some surfing, this takes about 371 inch pounds or around 42 uh, newton meters that you're going to need to go ahead and tighten this down with your uh, torque wrench. Uh, the gap in there will be taken up by this uh, wavy washer. Um, so you just go ahead and, and, and tie those two together. I was a little bit concerned about how uh, you know the distance is here on this bottom bracket with these uh, uh, seal seats, but none of that really matters. It just kind of floats right in there. Uh, so hopefully this will help you save your time, and uh, good luck when you go out and do this.